If you think corporations bought free speech before Now that they're human they'll Welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. I'm your host, David Delk. I'm president of the Portland chapter of the Alliance for Democracy. Our guests today are the producers of a new documentary called The Healthcare Movie. Our topic is the movie and the American healthcare insurance system. So I want to welcome Terry Sternberg and Lori uh, Simons. Yeah. Great, good. So thank you both for being here. Yes. Uh, sure. So what motivated you to make this movie? Um, well, I'm Canadian, and I grew up in Canada, and uh, Terry came up to Canada in 1982, and we got married, and uh, he lived there for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, two sons born in Calgary, Alberta, and then we moved to the United States uh, for Terry. We moved back to the United States in 1992. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we came back to the U.S., we had uh, several experiences where uh, we needed to decide whether we needed to get medical care or not. Well, uh, one was an accident with our w with our son, and to go through that process of having to decide whether you know it's bad enough to go to go to the emergency room, whether it's bad enough, whether it's bleeding enough, you know, to, you know that was our experience, and it's um, uh, uh, we de we decided, you know, at at, at some point that somebody had to uh, start telling the American people, you know, about, you know, what it's really like in, in, in Canada and that that peace of, that you really do have that peace of mind. It's not a myth, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, that there's peace of mind when you know that your health uh, is taken, you don't have to worry about health care and health insurance. Right. Uh, and meanwhile, we were also hearing people say a lot of things about Canada that were not any kind of match for our experience, and we were like, "Well, which Canada are they talking about?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were they were saying, you know, you don't want to go to Canada. The care there is terrible, and it's you you know, I don't know where they got that idea that you uh -huh. have to wait long times. <laughs> Never was our experience, and so um, many years passed actually before we uh, came to the point of deciding to make a film. Okay. It was 2009 when we started uh -huh. on the film. And you, your two boys uh, were born in Canada. They, they were. Born in Canada. And, um, the experience there, you weren't worried about uh, about healthcare or being able to afford it. There was no dollar sign equated with doctors in any thought bubble we ever had. <laughs> 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 that was the part that's so hard to explain to Americans. Uh -huh. it, you don't think about, you think about, you know, c do I have time to go to the doctor or, you know, is that p appointment convenient for me? <laughs> but you don't ever think about the cost. There is no cost. Yeah. Hospitals and doctors. Yeah. And of course, it's not an issue. just very recently, I uh, watching the national news, there was a, there was a story about uh, um, um, uh, the cost of, of giving birth in the United States mm -hmm. and how varied it was depending on what hospital exactly. it was. Exactly. Even within in the same um, city, it might vary mm -hmm. dramatically. Right. Uh, and, so, uh, and so they were advising for, uh, for expectant mothers to do their research. <laughs> <laughs> So Just you would never you have that conversation. You need when something else to worry oh, right, about, exactly, right? <laughs> right, yes, yeah. right? Well, you have to pick out your doctor in Canada, uh -huh. and you can pick any doctor you want. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a piece of research you have to do. But uh, the idea that it costs something to have a baby is like unbelievable to Canadians. Mm -hmm. We just talked to some folks that spent nine thousand dollars just for a typical birth of their baby. Mm -hmm. How can young people afford that? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. Now, uh, unfortunately, we ask that question so often about young people: how can they afford that? But in so many different situations, whether it's healthcare or housing or or uh, school education and so forth, it's like right. all of these costs have gone astronomical. That's right. So, you know, yeah. But, but, but we don't need to get off of, <laughs> off of our topic here. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so just to, to finish the answer, you know, yes. you know, what motivated the movie? Uh, because of all these things that were being said about the Canadian system that didn't meet our experience, we became more and more distressed by that. And uh, it was, you know, I guess it was 2009 at some at a party we went to with some, with some friends. Um, we were having this discussion about healthcare, and I said, you know, somebody ought to make a movie for the American people about the Canadian healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And our, our, uh, our friends there said, well, why don't you do it? Uh -huh. and so <laughs> we kind of <laughs> said, what? <laughs> uh -huh. we, you know, but we decided to go ahead and do it. And um, 
And, and so you had experience already of making movies, or, or <laughs> that's a good question. Well, the, the yeah. backstory of that is when our oldest yeah. son went to high school, he started getting interested in film production, and that re-triggered an interest that had always been in the back of my mind. So. Yeah. I started making films with his help, and then when he went to college, I went to college. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so I, I uh, studied how to make TV uh, episodes and news magazine type stories. Mm -hmm. And so I had been making a number of short films. This was the first feature film I that see. we yeah. did. Okay. Right. And this is like 65 minutes long? 65, 65 minutes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And I, I, I think you brought, it, brought the trailer. So why don't we show the trailer so everyone can have an idea of what the movie's about. Okay. 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 Great. Um. We're very privileged in Canada. Our healthcare system is great. If it wasn't for Canada, I'd be dead man. I had surgery on my shoulder. Well, I was on a waiting list for about a year and a half. My husband did have to wait for 13 months to do a knee replacement. I had to wait seven months for an MRI. It's the point where I'm spending seven, eight hundred dollars a month out of pocket. What do you know about Canadian healthcare? Uh, very little. We have a shared history of the development of our healthcare services. In both countries, up until about 1950, we had pretty much the same system. <laughs> How's your healthcare system work for you? Lousy. And how do you feel about your healthcare system? I think it's wonderful. I can't say enough good things about it. I just uh, thank uh, God every day that I am a Canadian citizen. I'm happy to be here. I'm very lucky. We are blessed every time that I've absolutely needed healthcare. Because of our health care system. Canada. 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 How has the Canadian healthcare system treated you? Well, we're still alive. <laughs> I think the, it's the result that counts. Madam Speaker, this is not the President's house. This is not the Democrats' house. This is the people's house, and the American people don't want a government takeover of health care. If the system is so bad, and we're all so strongly supportive of it, you must think we're really stupid. The real healthcare crisis is in public confidence and understanding, not in financial sustainability. Great. Well, um, it was nice that uh, you uh, filmed so much of that here in Portland, Oregon. That's that's always that's always uh, <laughs> that's always a, a, a nice a nice surprise. But be, beyond that, uh, it really points out the Canadians really like their system. Uh, and Definitely. that uh, if you did that same kind of survey of Americans, um, I would guess that most Americans would say no, they don't really like their system. Yeah, I think you're right. And if you asked if they thought that Canadians liked their system, most of them would say no. Uh -huh. Because they don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the myths mm -hmm. that uh, is that I guess there was a, there was a study done um, right, at the, right when we were making this movie, if, I think 85% of of uh, the Canadians said that they uh, appreciated their the service that they were getting from uh -huh. there, and um, that's not known. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and Canadian um, healthcare is a single payer healthcare system. Is that right? So, yeah. So okay. well, we learned a lot when we made this film. Mm -hmm. And yeah. even though we grew, I grew up in Canada. I didn't know a lot about it. I just knew that I had it. <laughs> Um, but what we learned was, you know, the way that it works. And basically, people pay taxes like we all do, and the taxes are a little bit higher in Canada. Uh, and w the taxes go to the state government, or the sorry, the provincial governments and the uh, federal government. And then the governments decide how to allocate the taxes towards the various things they need to pay for. And healthcare is an expensive item. But uh, an individual Canadian would not probably be able to tell you how much of their taxes goes to health care. It would have to be, you know, calculated somehow. And so um, there's no direct payment that you make as a Canadian into the, the system that provides you with your health care. And the, w the other way that it works is that the doctors uh, uh, all operate a private practice uh, down in the neighborhood. And 
the prices for each of their procedures is set by the medical association. Mm -hmm. In um, not the government. Not right. the government. <laughs> oh. The government well, the provides the funding. Uh -huh. The medical good, association good speaks with the government about how much funding they need and why. Mm -hmm. and then they allocate the funding within the province and the hospitals in the province get a block fund to run the entire hospital and so every year they negotiate how much they need for that based on what they needed the previous year and what they project and so it's kind of always a balancing act as to you know the the spending of the money and how much money they get back and forth uh, from the consumers point of view the, there is nothing out of your pocket. You take your paycheck home and there's none of it that goes towards anything medical. Oh, okay. It's also true for businesses. Businesses oh, don't yeah. pay any premiums. They don't, they're completely out of that system. Hmm. Okay. And, and, and so it's all, it's, all, uh, it's all based on taxes. So, right. mm -hmm. uh, and that would be taxes on individuals and taxes on corporations, I assume, also. Right. And I mean, some of the provinces uh, have other funds available for capital expenses and different kinds of embellishments. Mm -hmm. But for the doctor and hospital bills, it's yeah, pretty much uh -huh. covered through taxes. Okay. So um, with, that, with that distinction between the United States and Canada, what, what, are, some of the, what, what are some of the differences that have result from, from, from those different systems? Wow. Well, they were almost the same in 1950, and so there's a lot of, because of these changes, uh, because of decisions that they made that were different, that there's a lot of changes. Um, obviously, in the United States, um, you know, we have an insurance system, which means that insurance companies really can decide what kind of care people have, whether they're going to fund it or not. That doesn't happen in Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, people may think that people have an have an idea that the government makes that decision, you know, what kind of, but that's not true. The uh, care is completely determined bet between a, a doctor and the patient. Mm -hmm. And um, th that's, as we know, isn't true in the United States. Uh, right. Uh -huh. um, so that's one of the major, major differences. Um, do you want to say anything about that? About, well, in Canada, there are no insurance companies yes. that provide. Um, financial protection and actually the insurance companies are not really here for our health care they're here to protect our assets essentially protect their assets there <laughs> well there's two <laughs> but but essentially if you don't have insurance uh, now you have to but um, if you didn't have insurance in the past y you could go bankrupt mm -hmm. and in fact a lot of people with insurance did too so but that's another story mm -hmm. yeah uh, but I in Canada there is no um, there's no bankruptcy for one thing there's nobody that uh, dies because they don't have health insurance. There's nobody that goes um, without seeing a doctor because they can't afford it. Um, and so, so some, those are some of the major differences. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And uh, you have a clip in the in the fi in the documentary. Yeah. Uh, so why don't we run that clip because I think it says that pretty clearly. Okay. okay. Right. How many people in the United States die each year because they have no health insurance? How many people in Canada die each year because they have no health insurance? How many people go bankrupt each year in the United States because of medical expenses? How many people go bankrupt each year in Canada because of medical expenses? How many Americans do not have health insurance? How many Canadians do not have health insurance? How many Americans go without medical care because of costs? How many Canadians go without medical care because of costs? Clearly, there are distinct differences. Can you give us an idea well, of, of how the different systems you know, came to be? Um, I, I just want to go back to the other question just, sure. for, just for a second, because another huge difference is in Canada, they don't know what a deductible is. They don't know what a copay is. Uh, there's no, there's no co-insurance. <laughs> oh. uh, and, and so the, the cost 
is much less in Canada. Per, the, the cost in Canada per capita uh, is about half of what it is in the United States. That's the cost of health care for the country. Uh -huh. And um, that's a huge, huge difference. And if, we, if somehow we didn't have those extra costs, uh, the, the administration cost for the insurance companies is about 20% of our premiums. And if we didn't have to pay that, and we did, you know, it would lower our costs immensely. Right, yeah. yeah. For all yeah. Of us. Yeah. yeah, and I, I assume that uh, there they probably negotiate with the drug companies for drug they do. prices as well, which of course we can. the United They're States does not do that. Right. Well, right. You know, the Veterans Administration, I think, does. Yeah, yeah. that's because so they're, a, they're, a, they're a single parent system. Uh, yes, yeah, right. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 So I think you were asking, uh, and we did learn why they were so different, became so mm -hmm. different, because in the 1950s they were the same. Essentially, what happened in the 1950s was people paid into a doctor's plan that was run by the doctors and a hospital plan that was run by the hospitals, and they paid a sort of a regular amount, and they were members. And so then, if they needed the doctor or the hospital, it was already covered. Those were nonprofit plans, and. The same happened in Canada. And then um, insurance companies started to notice in the U.S. that if they came in with a lower price to employers, the employers would pay the lower price because employers had a wage freeze in those days oh. that um, they weren't allowed to increase wages, so they wanted to provide benefits to their employees. The insurance companies thought this was an opportunity because if you pick employed people, those are the healthy people. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, charged the employees less than these other doctor plans were charging. And pretty soon the insurance companies uh, swept through the country and everybody had private, well, a large percentage of people had private insurance. Uh, in the meantime, in Canada, the, um, there was a big struggle to get uh, health insurance, which, which started in the province of Saskatchewan, led by Tommy Douglas, who was a politician there. And he uh, wanted everybody to count. And so healthcare was one of those issues. And the American Medical Association was opposed to national health care and had started a media campaign in the United States in the 1940s against national health care, which made it up into Canada. So there was a, a, a struggle that took place. And uh, the, uh, the doctors went on strike. It was uh, people were without doctors. People who were about to have babies didn't have a doctor. Mm. And Scary. it was very frightening for people, and um, but they managed to keep the plan going, the plan of having the government pay for the doctors, and that it did it did impact the doctors' ability to make a lot of money. But they were collecting from all the people who couldn't pay before, mm -hmm. and so it was actually better for them as they, as it turned out in the in the long run. And that didn't happen in the United States. In the United States, the insurance companies grew bigger and bigger and bigger. It never happened in Canada. So we're now in a situation where nobody really knows how to backtrack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in fact, at the same time that they were pushing for national health care in Canada, there was ca public relations campaigns in the United States that were against national health care you know, in, uh, in, in the U.S. And it actually uh, was very effective. It convinced people to, to really fear it. They yeah. called it socialized medicine and uh, government yeah, takeover, and, and even to this same very day. Same arguments that we hear. Exactly, today. Right. it's uh -huh. exactly the same, and uh -huh. it's it's uh, in some ways odd. You know, it's like just very strange. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do I do, do I recall that uh, President Truman had a, a health care, a, a national health care plan that he was promoting? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Several presidents promoted a national health care plan from 1913 all the way up through. 2009, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. none of them were able to get any uh, anything through, hmm. except President Obama, mm -hmm. and yeah. his plan uh, involves the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. great. So in in uh, promoting this film, um, you've been doing a tour, or, or or you had an East Coast tour. Is is that right? We uh, we, we actually. It wasn't a movie tour as such. It w we actually joined an uh, a group called the Drive for Universal Healthcare. And um, what we found out was that many of the stops of the Drive for Universal Healthcare wanted to show our movie. So we showed the movie. And um, it turned into be more of a movie tour, tour than it started out to be. And we're going to do the same thing in the West Coast. Okay. Starting in San Diego. You want to say yeah. something about that? Yeah, we did the East Coast tour uh, in September of 2013, and we covered um, 10 different states in the East Coast. 
And we're starting our West Coast tour in San Diego uh, April 11th of this year, and it will go through May 3rd, ending in Seattle. Oh, okay, all right, great. And you made a little video of the East Coast tour. So we did, Let's yes. show that. And, okay. um, it'll be pretty much the same. I okay. mean, it'll be a lot of the same. Uh -huh. I started this idea because I had my own medical crisis and ended up $30,000 in debt. And so I wanted to do something. I realized, you know, there are people out there who feel like me. They want to do something to demonstrate that this is something that the American people want. My concept of the drive was uh, in my head, I saw this line of cars all connected with purple and yellow ribbons <laughs> driving down the highway in a line. Tonight we're going to have uh, some musical selections from Bob Wickline, and after that we'll all view the healthcare movie and after the movie a short panel of, uh, discussion about the issue. It's not just about healthcare being a human right. It's a basic human need. Just like food and water and shelter, and we need to pay attention to that with each other, or we're not a society that's going to survive. Our tomorrows will depend on what we do today. Let me not grieve the way. I've been sitting here for this health care issue out of the way. <laughs> um, yeah. Hasn't been easy. Health care for all and all for one. Would someone please help me see why it works all around the world but won't work for you and me? I know health care We want everybody to come and speak to us about what their feelings are about what's going on in this country around health care. Health care should be available to every American. It's a broken system. It's inefficient. It's not working for us, yet we continue to try to tweak this, this dysfunctional system. But you could find money to go finance a war. How come you can't find money to help us with health care and these people on the streets? enough people putting enough pressure relentlessly, we might actually get somewhere. If we want health care for all, now's the time to raise our voices till they hear us in the halls of government and behind each corporate door. And we're sick and tired of getting sold out and won't take it anymore. You've got a body, you're involved. Medicare for all because health care is right. Medicare for So you said that the, the West Coast tour is coming, starting in San Diego and it's going on up to Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know it's starting in it's stopping in Portland. So talk about the talk about the Portland stop. The Portland stop is uh, April 30th, and it's at First Unitarian Church. Uh, I believe it's at 7 p.m. Am I correct? Uh, yes. <laughs> 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 right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and uh, the both of you are going to be there. We, we will. will, yeah. Okay, great. Plus, there'll be some other people in the group, and uh, there'll be music. You know, Bob Bob Wickline is our musician. And okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it'll be a good evening. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Having seen the movie, uh, I, I was very excited. But it's, it's really, uh, it's very insightful. It really explains that difference between what has happened in Canada and what has happened in the United States. Uh, and gives us direction of where we need to go mm -hmm. uh, here in the United States so that we can have that kind of health care. So let me ask you this. We have Obamacare, mm -hmm. the Affordable Care Act. 
What's the distinction between that and a universal single payer wow. system like Canada has? You want, you want to answer that? Yeah. Should I? Oh, well, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, <laughs> the Please. Affordable Care Act involves the insurance companies and puts them in between us and our care. Uh, and there is no such entity between uh, a patient and their doctor in Canada whatsoever. Okay. There's nothing in between. There are two different systems. I mean, Canada has a tax-based system and the U.S. system has an insurance system and so Obamacare is still an insurance system and there's no um, cost controls. It's not universal. It's not going to be universal. So it, uh, it doesn't really accomplish the purpose it was set out to, mm -hmm. stated purpose. Uh, it, yeah, and I think when Obama was, was originally talking about it and they were talking about the public option, which of course mm -hmm. got dropped, and of course they never did talk about having a single payer system right, in right. the United States. You know, he still did say that it was going to be universal and everybody was going to get covered, but we know in fact that that's not the case. Well, yeah. being covered isn't the same as having health care. This and is that's true. Because, uh, you know, even in my case, I'm covered, but I always ask myself, uh, I have this big deductible. Mm -hmm. If I go to see the doctor, I pay the whole thing up until I achieve the deductible. Do I want to pay that? Can I afford it? No. So I'm still in exactly the same position of uh, trying to make a decision of whether I should see a doctor mm -hmm. based on money rather than based on my symptoms. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's invite people to come see the movie wherever, mm -hmm. wherever they may be here in yeah. Portland on April 30th, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and if you're elsewhere, well, uh, and and people can go to your website, which is healthcaremovie.net. Healthcaremovie.net, and purchase the DVD. Yeah. Schedule screenings themselves. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, okay. like that. Good. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much for being here. Thank yeah. you. Thank okay. you. Great. Thank you. So our guests today have been Terry Sternberg and Lori Simons, producers of the documentary The Healthcare Movie. Go to thehealthcaremovie.net to learn more, buy a copy, and then share it with your friends. So here in Portland, we do have two upcoming events promoting a universal healthcare system. First, there's the third annual Inner City Blues Festival on Saturday, April 5th from 6 to midnight. This is a benefit for Healthcare for All Oregon, which is advancing the cause of universal improved healthcare for all in, in Oregon. Uh, tickets are $15 in advance and $20 at the door at the Melody Ballroom, 615 Southwest Alder Street here in Portland. More uh, details are available on the Healthcare for All Oregon website at www.hcao.org. Uh, the second event is sponsored by the Alliance for Democracy, and it's a screening of the new documentary we've been talking about today, The Healthcare Movie. Plan on joining us on April 30th at 7 p.m at the First Unitarian Church, Southwest 12th and Salmon in downtown Portland. Our two guests today will be present after the movie to join in discussions of the healthcare issues and the movie itself. So please do join us. Thank you to Roger Bates, Brad Leach, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas for their volunteer time getting us on the air. And thank you to all of you for watching. I hope that you'll all watch again in two weeks. Bye. <music> If you think corporations bought free speech before Now that they're human, they'll buy even more